Yeah, hello and welcome to the hardware API tutorial. Lots of people have waited for that to get into the details of this new API, which comes first with Bitwig 3.1. And in a previous tutorial, I already gave an overview about what is new in the API version 10 and the hardware API is one part of this. And the question is, why would you need to do that? So just to wrap up, what happened before before that you registered your media handler you detected your midi commands yourself and then called any kind of command and translated that to volume change for example or uh, an action happening in Bitwig. so why now this new hardware api so the main argument is that it's faster we will look into that in more detail why this is faster then the next really nice thing is it comes with a simulator so it's simulates the complete device it also simulates the midi command so it acts like the real deal also if you have a usb connection running it also simulates that so this is really nice for example if you on a trip and don't have the device with you you can still develop new features for that device or even develop for a not yet existing device if you have a specification for that or create a completely new thing it also provides touch support so you could also use it to create your own touch display this is not the intended use but that's also could be come in handy for some people then something more not so clearly focused is this description bitwig studio is aware of the control so before the door did not really know that okay it knew there is a controller but it did not knew that there are buttons or what they do or what the user's intention is now with the hardware api also the door gets an idea what is there and for example can support you if you want to exchange functionality on the for example, you want to remap a button and so Bitwig knows about it, in which cases you might want to uh, swap that. So for example, only if you're in a certain mode, you could have the option to remap a button or the feature that is called by that, which might not be intended by the creator of a script. Then the next point, easier. I put a question mark behind that because it's a complex API. It's not so trivial, but I think if you got the basic idea how to use it, it might be easier because you can separate the creation of the controls and the mapping is separate so for example if maybe a firmware changes there you just simply change the mapping of the button and the rest is still the same so maybe to wrapping your head around that and the code might be a bit easier but it takes a bit to get the idea of it and dive into it so let's look into the first thing why it's faster so what is the situation right now so right now we have this audio engine which does all the high heavy processing in bitwig which is written in c c plus plus and this has also the connection to midi so it receives the midi input and also handles the midi output but the, the rest of the application uh, which does all the glue code and the user interface uh, but the user interface is also written in, in C, uh, so the drawing code and stuff like that. So the glue code is in Java and Java also connects to the extension API or to the JavaScript scripting engine. So what that means is you need to, to cross a process here, go into the Java code. There you decide if you have an extension running or not. You might need to go into JavaScript if you code JavaScript, which also crosses another thread border at least. And then you do your decision what to do with that command, have your mapping here. Then you do a change for example let's turn down the volume a bit then it goes again here on a java side and then it also needs to go into the audio engine to turn down the volume a bit and there might also be then some notification going on here for the vu meters as you see this takes some time several milliseconds to cross all these borders and if you for example want to turn knobs here to do automation recording you get a bit of delay in that pipeline so the situation is a bit better if you code in java and write your extension directly in java then you cross out this javascript border crossing and it's a bit faster for automation but the ideal thing would be if you could run all the stuff in the audio engine and this gets possible now with the hardware api so how does it work 
You don't need to cross the border for that to simply tell the Audi engine what you want to do or what you expect, which means you bind the MIDI command to an action so the Audi engine can process everything at once and you don't need to send stuff to other processes and threads. So you basically just configure what should happen in there and then it works. So this even gets compiled, not only configured, so this is real code running in there in the Audi engine process as well. This is not only possible at the beginning on the startup you can do this all the time so you can change the configuration for example if the user presses a shift button and you want to bind something different when shift is pressed then you can do that as well and everything is nice and fast how does this api work now as usual everything starts with the controller host so the controller host has all these great functions to get to the other objects classes and the main one here is this new hardware surface so there's a create function here to get to this hardware surface and for the hardware surface you can create the different controls on your device faders knobs and so on which the main interface here is a hardware element so this is the main thing you get your controls and these can then be bound to a bindable this might be for example volume or the play state or parameter change in the device things like that and then we need the other side so the MIDI input need also be bound to such an element so which command MIDI command triggers a hardware element and for that one we have these input matches and they can be created from the MIDI in object which makes sense there we have the create matches to bind this to the input so three main elements you need to understand you have your your controls so the real hardware controls on your device and you need to bind it to an input matcher and to the action that should happen so not that difficult to understand and let's see how we can create these things so the classes are as i said the main one is a hardware surface and everything starts here from the controller host so there is a create hardware surface function where you can get your hardware then you have the different create functions here to create your knobs faders buttons lights there's also a keyboard here simulated output displays text-based ones graphic ones and you can also combine these objects for example you can say i have a knob which is touchable and also has uh, is pressable so you can add a button to that and things like that everything is possible so to create the input matches as i said here in the midi input there are the different create matcher functions and there is also some low level stuff because these are only upper class helper functions which all call this low level expression code so you can also write very complicated expression if you run into a controller which does some really weird midi uh, interpretation or you can also also combine different matches you can for example say okay I want to trigger that if a note is received or even if a CC is received and uh, this is also possible but normally you only need those easy ping function here up there okay and we need also the other side so the hardware bindable there are existing actions and continuous parameters for example the volume of a, of a track or the panorama of a track or play action here of a transport which already exist and can simply bound and that's it but that does not work all the time you might have some more specific code for example you want to trigger multiple actions with a button then you cannot simply map for example to a play action you need to have more code in between and for that you can use uh, create action and for the dynamic continuous messages you can use this create target for example you control a parameter which is only relevant to the hardware and does not map to anything in Bitwig at all for example the brightness of a, your hardware display is something which does not map to anything in, in Bitwig. So you could also create your own target. The only thing to note about if you use these methods, they are not processed in the audio engine because this is code the user writes, which does not get automatically compiled to assembler code. So uh, this needs to cross the audio engine, but there are uh, several cases where you need to have them. And okay, for those normally, it's also not relevant because you do not use them for automation recording. We will look now in the first real coding example and this will simply look at getting input data into 
your hardware API. So as usual from the online repository, there is now a new folder named uh, episode 14. And this contains a simple first example. So you can create your start file as usual uh, with the create function in Bitwig. First thing you need to be aware of that at least you mark here this as version 10. This is JavaScript. So I use JavaScript here to have a easy to understand and editable example. But the suggestion is absolutely there to use Java for coding because of the debugging. And I made a specific episode about why you should use Java. I don't want to repeat that. But just for a little experiments and getting a first idea about the API here, JavaScript is a little bit easier to handle and to try. So you need to have here API version 10 or higher if this would be available. So currently also 11 is in beta, so we're moving on here in that regard. If you make changes to that script, change your name, and also the most important thing is change your idea just to remember that. Okay, so I added one MIDI input because we just want to look at the input side of the hardware API in this first little test program. And what we want to do is we want to map a button, a slider, an absolute knob, and a relative knob. So this covers basically everything except the piano keyboard simulation which I will show you uh, next time. I have a little keyboard here connected which has a button which sends MIDI CC 112, a slider with MIDI CC 14, an absolute knob with 15 and the relative knob with 16. And if you do experiments with your controller you need to simply adjust that to the values that your device is capable of sending. So we need to do three steps. First we need to create controls, we need to bind it to MIDI commands, and we need to bind it to the action targets. So let's look up here. First thing, as I said now multiple times, we need to create a hardware surface, host create hardware surface, so there it is, and this provides all these create functions. So first thing is we create a hardware button and all the parameters you need to give is an ID. This will not be shown to the user, this is only visible here in a simulator editor we will see later on and you should use something meaningful for example like here play button this is basically the information for you if you edit the controls in a simulator that you know which button you are dealing with so the next one is simply called a slider the absolute knob and the relative knob and here the functions are pretty straightforward and you get back the objects and here in the commands I wrote which Java class this actually is so you can also look that up in the documentation. Next step we need to do is bind the MIDI commands so for that we need to first get here the MIDI input this is nothing new this is also what you did before in uh, non-hardware API days and for that now we need to create the matches and then assign these matches to the hardware controls. So for the button we create here a CC action matcher because actions are the pressed actions for buttons and we simply say okay our CC value is coming on channel 0 here on the first MIDI channel. We use here 112 and it should trigger if we receive 127. So normally buttons send 127 when you press them and if you release them they normally send 0. And with a button uh, you need to be a bit careful because because it has several actions. One action is for press, there is also a release action, so you can also differentiate between these two actions. So what we did here, we assigned, if we receive MIDI CC 112 with a value of 127, which is the pressed action, we assign that to press. So this button triggers if we receive that. For the sliders and knobs, it's all the same function, set adjust value matcher, and there you create also the different variations. This one is an absolute CC matcher so it matches also on MIDI channel 1 here uh, the slider control of 14 same is here this is the absolute same uh, matcher for the absolute knob and for the relative knob it gets a bit complicated because relative values with knobs are encoded in different variations there are three common ones and there are specific uh, functions for creating these encodings one for example is the bin offset version and 
And if you have no idea what your relative knob is really sending, just try all three variants and you're good to go. That's what I also normally do because it's really difficult to wrap your head around that one. And there is a bit of a complicated parameter here as well. This means how many values are sent for a full turn of a knob. So for example, you could adjust here already a bit of a speed if your relative knob does not have a full turn or something like this. It's um, You can experiment with that, but normally 1 on 27 should be fine for you. Third thing to do is then to map to an action or a target. So we map here our button to a simple play action to start the playback in a ranger. And here again, we need to assign this to the press action. There is a set binding function. There are also add binding functions if you would want to map multiple stuff. And there is here the transport play action. So this is also new in API 10. There are now several predefined actions. For the other three ones, we create here a track bank. So simply assign the first three tracks. So track bank with a three page size. We assign those different controls, also with the set binding function to the volume property of those tracks. So that's basically it. We created the controls, we mapped the MIDI and we assigned the target. So let's try that in Bitwig. I go to the controller configuration. I already added that here, assigned it simply to the MIDI mode here of the complete control keyboard. And let's see what it does. I created also three tracks. So the first track I move here, the knob, which is assigned to a fader, which works also the absolute knob works and the relative knob makes stupid stuff because it's not really uh, here mapped as a uh, as a relative knob but as a it's an absolute one so it behaves a little bit weird but it's just for showing you also a relative uh, code and also the button let's press the button yeah, and the button also works for the play and also for the stop state. So this was the first introduction, which already got longer than I expected. So in the second part, we will then look into the simulator, how to use them, how to activate it. And until then, write some funky code.